The Laplace transform is one of the most important concepts in signal processing and linear systems and systems in general and control theory because what it allows you to do is transform, move away from the time domain and it pushes you into a different domain altogether. It takes a system or a signal or an input, right? Any signal that's described in the time domain, something that is a function of T and it converts it into the Laplace domain, which is a totally different way of dealing with functions. It's also called the S domain. You may hear that terminology. And it takes a function F that's described in terms of T and it converts it into a different domain that's the S domain. And just by convention, when we take the Laplace transform, we write the function that we transformed in the time domain as lowercase, uh, in lowercase, and the, val and the same function transformed in the Laplace domain as capital F. This is just by convention because it, it helps us understand whether we're dealing with a time domain function or a time domain signal or a Laplace domain signal or, or, or function. There's actually an, uh, uh, an equation that will perform the Laplace transform. You don't tend to need to compute it very often, but it's important to at least see once and understand it. It's the integral of zero to infinity of, and this is to get you to f of s, of the function you're trying to transform, f of t, times e to the negative st dt. And so what you'll notice is that after you compute this, t disappears because you're integrating it away, right, from zero to infinity, and you're left with something in terms of s. And s is where you get into the Laplace domain. Now you might say, well, what on earth is s? S is technically called the complex frequency. S is written in terms of the real component plus I omega. So it's sigma plus I omega, and it's a complex frequency. The exact details of that are not immediately necessary to understand, but keep it in the back of your mind because it will crop up in being more important as things move forward. The real power of the Laplace domain and why one would ever want to do something like this, even though it seems like it's just adding a whole bunch of complexity right now, is that it takes operations that are otherwise challenging to perform in the time domain and simplifies them tremendously. So if you think back to convolution, if you have two signals that you want to convolve, right? You have some function, f of t or some input f of t and say like you have some some transfer uh, some some impulse response function g of t if you want to convolve them in the time domain you have to do that crazy flipping and integrating and sliding across and all that stuff turns out that if you take the laplace transform of this request expression it in it what it actually comes out to be is the laplace transform of each one of these, of these functions multiplied, multiplied together. Think about that for a moment. What this is saying is that convolution in the time domain is just multiplication in the Laplace domain. Now that's powerful. That saves you from having to do a very messy convolution. You just have to multiply, figure out whatever your functions are, signals are, and represent them in the Laplace domains. And there's usually tables that will take functions that you may have and give you the Laplace representation of them. And so then once you have that and you've converted to the Laplace domain, you just multiply and you've convolved your signal. And then once you've convolved your, your, your 
aspiration, you can then go back with the inverse Laplace transform and get yourself back in the time domain if you so want. The other interesting thing about the Laplace transform is that this idea is symmetric. So what may be my convolution in the time domain is multiplication in the, in the Laplace domain. Similarly, multiplication in the time domain that's not looking right, is it? Let's clean that up. Multiplication in the time domain, f of t times g of t, is actually convolution in the Laplace domain. So this is also interesting, right? You wouldn't want to do a convolution, you know, if you can avoid it. So that just, all this is saying is multiply first in the time domain, and then you can just transform the output, and you'll get your convolved your convolved functions in the Laplace domain, if you so want. It, it, it is a, it's a symmetric operation. But the Laplace transform is more powerful than just helping you assist with, with convolution. In fact, it's extremely powerful in many ways. There's a few other key examples to think about and go over. The Laplace transform of the delta function is just one. The Laplace transform of the unit step function is one over S. There are also Laplace transforms for differentials. And this is one of the other spaces where operations in the Laplace domain become very easy. The Laplace transform is, is instrumental in helping simplify differential equations. And you'll see why in a moment. If you have the first derivative, let's tweak blue here. If you have the first derivative of a function that you're trying to take, that in the Laplace domain is just S times the, fun the Laplace transform of the function. Technically, you have to minus it by f of zero. But in general, when you're dealing with functions like this, most of the time, you can just assume that your initial state, your initial starting points are just zero. And so that, that just makes things very nice. It goes away because tech, you know, usually when you're, when, you're, when you're dealing with functions of this scale, the, the initial points, the, uh, the initial starting points, you can, just, you can just sort of wave away. And so for all intents and purposes, this just disappears and you tend not have to worry about it. But it's not just single differentials that we're, that we're interested in, right? This is true now for second orders as well. So that means the second derivative of f of t is just this repeated itself, right? It is in the Laplace domain, s squared f of s minus, technically again, s of f of zero minus f of zero. And again, for most, for most instances, these will just be zero. And so you can ignore them, but it's important to recognize that they exist. Look at what this is doing though. This is taking differential equations and turning them into just multipliers of S. Another very powerful, uh, powerful aspect of this is that obviously if you have something that we can multiply by S for differentials, you might imagine, is, it, is there also something very nice that it does for integrals? And the answer is, yes, of course there is. So if you want to integrate your function f of t, technically you have to be doing it from zero to t. Sorry, zero to a. Uh, zero to some, some start, it has to be starting at zero. That's, that's the key. Zero to some, to some value with respect to dt. This in the Laplace domain is just dividing by s times Laplace transform of the function. 
This is an incredibly powerful concept, right? You could see how this could simplify so many things where di differentials are now just, right? Derivatives are now just multiplying by S and integrating is just dividing by S. So if you take the double integral right now, you're dividing by one over S squared. Extremely useful. And it's a totally different way of dealing with, with not just differentials, but convolution and signal processing. The Laplace transform and, the, and operating in the, in the Laplace domain is one of, the, one of the ways in which linear time invariant systems can be so easily understood and managed because nobody, deal, nobody likes to deal with the time domain. It's messy. The integrals are, are, are complicated. But in the Laplace domain, everything is just so elegant and simple to understand. That's why it's so useful.